Good day. Today I will discuss the taxation of international sports federations. The business of sport, like any other business, is subject to taxation. And in future discussions, I will discuss the taxation of sports clubs, national associations, players, and commercial partners such as sponsors and broadcasters. However, today I am going to limit myself to talking about the taxation of sports federations such as FIFA and the IOC. FIFA and the IOC generate billions of dollars in revenue and it's absolutely critical for such organizations to minimize their tax liabilities. Many such federations pay regular development grants to their members who spend that money on developing the sport in their own countries and to give part of that away to the taxman doesn't really help the sport. An international federation has to watch out for two main tax exposures. Namely, the potential taxes in the country where that federation is based. Let's call these local taxes. And secondly, exposure to taxation in those countries where that federation carries out certain activities. Let's call these international taxes. And there are a number of ways that these potential tax exposures can be minimized or even eliminated altogether. So let's start with local home country taxes. FIFA and the IOC, for example, are based in Switzerland. World Rugby is based in Ireland. The International Netball Federation and the World Squash Federation have their headquarters in England. International Athletics has its headquarters in Monaco and the Badminton World Federation has its headquarters in Malaysia and so on. Each of these federations are subject to the tax laws of the country in which they have their headquarters. So how does the federation deal with local home country taxes? Well, first and foremost, the federation could enter into a special agreement with the home government for tax exemption. This would probably be a condition for having its headquarters in that country. And actually, it may well be to the financial benefit of the government to grant that tax exemption in order to attract such federations. Let's look at an example. Let's say that due to high corporate taxes, there are currently no federation based in that country. And like old Mother Hubbard, the government's cupboard of international sports federations is completely bare. That's quite a horrible drawing of a cupboard, by the way. Anyway, it's a sorry state of affairs and obviously, therefore, as there are no federation, there is no business from them and therefore there is obviously nothing to tax. So, zero income. Now consider this. If that government decides to grant tax exemptions to sports federations and attracts a number of federations to its country, then the local economy will start generating substantial incremental business. How is that? Well, for a start, you will have the employees of the federations who will live there, who will pay taxes on their salaries. They will open bank accounts and deposit their salaries there. They will pay rent or buy houses. They will spend on entertainment, on schooling, on medical, etc., etc. And end up spending probably 70 to 80 percent or maybe even more of their salaries within the country. This is all incremental business and incremental income. The Federation itself will rent expensive office space. It will start conducting meetings at its headquarters and organize other sports conferences in the country. This will generate revenue for the local airlines, hotels, taxis, restaurants, etc., which again will be for the benefit of the local economy. So looked at it that way, one can actually see that this works to the financial benefit of a country to actually exempt sports federations from taxes because this creates a completely new source of incremental income if they relocate and they set up their offices there. In addition to this, then there is all that positive publicity and other intangible benefits that are generated from having a prestigious sports federation in your country. 
it's really a win-win for both sides secondly in the absence of a tax exemption the federation could be incorporated as a type of a local company that has special legal status which may for example grant it exemption from local taxes obviously the local regulations have to allow for this an example of this would be a section 501c3 type company in the USA which is a non-profit or a charitable entity which is exempt from federal taxes and which some sports organizations in the USA use as their legal vehicle thirdly the federation could set up a tax efficient structure whereby it keeps the majority of its revenues outside its home country by setting up offshore entities in tax free or low tax jurisdictions and therefore limits its financial activities in the host country to a minimum this can be quite complicated and onerous and there are various important compliance requirements but this can be an effective tax planning tool as long as the legislation allows it and maybe there are no other alternatives now let's discuss the international tax exposures resulting from the activities of the federation in other countries what we are mainly talking about here are the major sporting events or tournaments that the federation organizes such as a fifa world cup or the olympics or some other international tournaments that are regularly held in different countries now major sporting events consist of exciting and glamorous competition world records great memorable moments that will last you a lifetime sporting rivalry heroes winners champions and of course medals having said that behind the scenes these tournaments are also about hundreds of commercial contracts legal agreements and about enormous revenues running into many hundreds of millions and billions now let's take a quick look at why a federation has a tax exposure in other countries namely the country in which it has its tournaments by having its event away from home in another country the federation is then deemed to be carrying out a business in that country just as if it was physically present there and it therefore becomes subject to the tax laws of that country it's exactly like having your headquarters in your home country let's say in the uk and then deciding to open up a branch somewhere else let's say in the usa in this case the event is considered as your branch office in that country and the federation will therefore be taxed on all its event related income and when we are talking about billions of dollars of revenue it is therefore critical that proper tax planning is carried out right at the outset so the tax exposures can be eliminated so how does the federation manage this huge tax exposure well for a start when countries bid to host a major event one of the conditions that fifa or the ioc will put into the bidding documents is that the host agreement must provide the event as well as the federation with a complete tax exemption this will extend to all the revenues and the profits that may be generated for the federation from that event so if a if a country wants to host a major international tournament such as the olympics it will have to provide the ioc with a complete tax exemption in some hosting countries special legislation is introduced specifically for this purpose so for example in the case of the uk special legislation was enacted in order to exempt the 2012 london olympics from uk taxation and in the case of india there is already legislation in place within the tax policies that exempt major international sporting events from taxation and apart from seeking exemption on the tournament revenue and profits the federation will also try and get exemption from vat and other sales and service taxes exemption from custom duties is also very important as there will be a lot of event related equipment that will be imported into the country so it's very important 
that all of this is covered in detail within the hosting agreement that is signed between the Federation and the event hosts. Secondly, in the absence of a tax exemption, there are several steps that a Federation can take to minimize and maybe even eliminate its event tax exposures through proper tax planning. One of these is to ensure proper segregation of the event operational activities from the commercial and revenue side of the business. In order to do this, the Federation will form a local event management company in the host country, which will run all event operations and activities, book all the local costs, and employ all the local staff. And as this company is mainly booking costs and carrying out activities with very little revenue, its uh, chances are that it's going to end up making a loss and therefore have little or no tax liabilities. And this would be completely segregated from the Federation as well as, as well as its global revenues. And therefore with proper planning and ring fencing, the major event revenues would be outside the reach of the host tax authorities. Please note that I have overly simplified matters as this particular type of tax planning is very, very complicated and subject to complex international tax laws, including double tax treaties. Anyway, I hope this gives you a flavor of some of the issues involved and some of the strategies that federations use to manage and minimize their tax exposures. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.